older piece, but it is absolutely applicable right now into the sound I'm about to play for you. It goes over thoroughly how the FBI, just let me, I wrote this in capital letters, Joe. The FBI, ladies and gentlemen, never forget this ever. Never has looked at the DNC servers. Matter of fact, Joe, Hmm. quoting Jim Comey, there were multiple requests made to look at those DNC servers that Joe were hacked by the Russians Mm -hmm. that were denied. Now, BuzzFeed is suing them, as I told you on last week's show, for evidence that the DNC servers were hacked because BuzzFeed's being sued about the dossier and needs evidence that the DNC was, in fact, hacked by the Russians. Denied. Why? Why is it denied? If the DNC is so sure they were hacked by the Russians and that Trump then colluded with the Russians to get this information out there, if they're so sure of it, why not just let us look? Why not let the FBI do a forensic analysis? Let me suggest to you that this cut by Barack Obama, this is his last press conference after Hillary loses the election. This is in December. Election day was in November. He's still the president, obviously, but he's as lame a lame duck as you're going to get. He's about to lose the presidency in a month. He gives a press conference. And here is the genesis of the entire collusion fairy tale. This was not some elaborate, uh, complicated espionage scheme. They, They hacked into some Democratic Party emails that contained pretty routine stuff, some of it embarrassing or uncomfortable because I suspect that if any of us got our emails hacked into, there might be some things that we wouldn't want suddenly appearing on the front page of a newspaper or a telecast, even if there wasn't anything particularly illegal or controversial about it. And then it just took off. What? (laughs) What? Come again? You see what he did there? Just took off. Just took off. <laughs> it just took magically, Joe. Wow. He doesn't mention, by the way, that the entire story was then fed to liberal media hacks who ran with it <laughs> and, and printed it and printed it over and over again. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the genesis. That That is the most important soundbite I've ever played on this show. Ever. And... Forgive me, I've been looking for it for a long time, and I, I'm not going to tell you how I came around to it again, but I, you know who sent it, but <laughs> they were right. That is the genesis of the entire collusion fairy tale. Obama up there that day, and notice what he does, because folks, this goes to show you how these, they're, they're, Obama's lying. Now, I know in, it's, it's considered bad manners, Joe. Mm-hmm political commentary to call people liars folks i'm sorry obama's a liar he is lying here he says two things that are outright lies first thing he says is this is not some elaborate 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 sophisticated scheme yeah right well what is it obama now i say he's lying because one i i i agree with them That it was not necessarily an elaborate, sophisticated scheme. But that's not why he's saying it. He's saying it because Obama understands that in his last press conference, where he was expected to be handing the reins to Hillary to wipe clean the whole spying operation on Trump to never be seen again. As Ren and Stimpy say, where they go, nobody knows. It was going to disappear to the land of the left socks. You ever watch Ren and Stimpy? Oh, yeah. It was, yeah, the greatest show ever. It was never, ever going to appear again. Now he doesn't know what to do. It's a month later. He can't come out and talk about the elaborate, sophisticated scheme that, believe me, was sophisticated. Hillary was paying a law firm to pay Fusion GPS to pay the Russians to get money. Oh, it was sophisticated, but he's lying about it because he can't talk about. The, now, to be clear, he's addressing the Russian scheme there, but he has to minimize it. But why? Why? I mean, you should be saying. But Dan, I don't get it. For the last two years now, or, you know, year plus, 
We've been told by the Democrats that this was a scheme with Trump to overthrow an election. They got involved in Purple State. They switched. They changed votes in people's minds. Mm -hmm. Isn't it in Obama's interest then to go up if this is where it all starts? This this press conference is where the whole thing starts. Isn't it in his interest to say, what an elaborate, sophisticated scheme the Russians had? Gosh, we got duped. Why wouldn't he say that? Because he's Barack Obama. I worked with him. I'm patting myself on the back. I'm trying to impress you. I did. This is a fact. Of I've been around this guy a long time. He's a proud dude. You think he's going to leave off? He doesn't even like Hillary, by the way. You think, I'm not kidding. You think for a second he's going to leave office and talk about what a numbskull his administration was when they, if they, that they sat back and watched the Russians destroy our entire electoral process? Do you think for a second he's going to do that? But, but Hillary's got him by the, uh, she's grabbing. Why? Because he can't throw her under the bus. Because the spying scandal needs to be covered up. He needs Hillary's cooperation in that. And also, as I said to you now, once, twice, a hundred times, Hillary was tactically brilliant. Hillary emailed Obama from her private email account, roping him into the whole scheme. Obama can't throw Hillary under the bus because he goes down with her. He's on her private email scheme. He's in public statements saying he knew nothing about her private email system while he was emailing her. Gosh, Hillary, I got to tell you, for someone as, 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 as ideologically dangerous, you are tactically brilliant. I mean it. Her team is smart. They roped his butt right in. He can't throw her under the bus. So he has to do two things in this presser. And go back and rewind it if you'd like. It's that's what's great about podcasts. He does two things. First, he has to save his own ass. And he has to minimize it while still acknowledging it happened. So the first thing he says is, well, this wasn't some elaborate scheme here. You know, (laughs) this wasn't like James Bond stuff. But he can't say it didn't happen. Now, keep in mind. What he said there contradicts entirely what the Democrats have been telling us for well over a year now. That it was an elect, they've said the exact opposite, actually, that it was this elaborate scheme to overthrow an election. There's Obama on the record trying to protect his legacy. He didn't want to be the president known for Russian infiltration into the election system. He doesn't. He's a proud guy. Yeah, I've been around him. You may not like him. I certainly don't like his politics, but I'm telling you, he's a proud guy. You see, wait, whoa, I've been around the guy for what, three years of my life. He has to minimize the scandal, but minimize the scandal's impact on him. But he also, Joe, has to sow the seeds for a bigger narrative to come later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he sows the Chia Pet seeds and he waters the Chia Pet seeds for this big, hairy scandal Chia Pet by saying something he knows is absolutely false. And trust me, he knows what he's saying is false here. He says... And, you know, you know, they hacked the DNC and the Russians got in there and, you know, it wasn't boring stuff. It wasn't like anything illegal, the emails, but they hacked the DNC. He knows this isn't true. He knows it's not true. It is false. The Democrats, there was no evidence at that point that the Russians hacked the DNC. Folks, please read the Zero Hedge piece. I'll leave you with one that one of the key pieces of evidence that CrowdStrike, which is the firm that analyzed the DNC computers, by the way, paid for by Perkins Coie, oh. who paid Fusion GPS, who paid Chris Steele, who paid Russians for information. Also, Perkins Coie made hundreds of thousand dollars for organizing for America, Obama's former campaign arm. Yeah. Okay, Uh, so they paid CrowdStrike conveniently to come in there and look at the DNC computers. And CrowdStrike says, ah, the Russians did it. And they point to, here's one piece of information to make you laugh hysterically. One piece of evidence that they use to determine, Joe, that the Russians did it is one of the pieces of software they're saying was also involved in the hacking into of a Ukrainian military artillery app. 
and that the hacking into of this artillery app, Joe, caused massive battlefield casualties. So in other words, you get what I'm saying? They're saying, look, the similar type of thing that happened with the Ukrainians happened at the DNC. Therefore, the Russians did it. Here's the problem, okay. folks. Okay. The, both the maker of the app and the Ukrainians, who, by the way, were very pro Hillary, are like, uh, hey, uh, Daddy O, that didn't happen. <laughs> folks, there's more. Mm. Could the Russians have hacked the DNC? Yes. What I'm telling you is 17 intelligence agencies at no point came to a conclusion that the Russians hacked the DNC. What they came to with the conclusion was, was that there were similar patterns involved because the intelligence agencies and law enforcement agencies involved in the report never looked at the servers, the computers, never. They're relying on a now I don't want to say thoroughly discredited, but largely discredited report put together by CrowdStrike that uses information that even the other parties, the information's about are saying, no, that that's not true. That's not what happened. The Ukrainians were pro Hillary. They're saying, no, no, that's not. We didn't suffer battlefield losses because they hacked into the app. The app maker, by the way, Joe is saying that's not what happened either. Hmm. Folks, what am I telling you? I'm telling you that Obama knew this was made up. Obama knew that the DNC being hacked by the Russians was entirely made up. Obama went out and gave this press conference, laying the groundwork for the Democrats to destroy the Trump presidency later. I'm telling you also that that narrative is now falling apart and falling apart quickly. There is no mention in the indictment of Russians hacking the DNC computers. There is no evidence of that. The Democrats know this. The Democrats also know if that is not true, then Trump colluding to get the information from the Russians that they hacked can't be true either because the Russians may not have done it. I'm not absolving the Russians. If you've been following my show, by the way, they are clearly a geopolitical foe that needs to be dealt with harshly. Listen to the show and you'll see. But that's a different show. I'm dealing with evidence now of collusion that doesn't exist. The Democrats are panicking, folks. Their entire story is falling apart. I think the Mueller team is panicking because that story is falling apart, too. And their sole reason for being was to determine that there was collusion between the Russians, but they have nothing. And that is why, to sum this up, I believe Mueller's team did not charge these Russians with uh, influencing the election with that specific charge, even though they describe what they're talking about in the charging document. Because Hillary's team, I think, later on is going to have been shown to have tried to make stuff go away here, along with the Obama team, by creating false narratives about hacking that didn't exist. I also believe that's why Adam Schiff now is starting to throw Obama under the bus. I think the Democrats absolutely know that Obama's team right now is in deep, deep, mm, you know what I mean? Yeah, some heavy, with the spying scandal. Heavy shift going with, on, man. Heavy, heavy shift going on. <laughs> we got to put that one on. A there we go. Too. This is heavy shift. Heavy shift everywhere. They realize Obama was the genesis of a lot of this. Obama propagated the myth that the Russians hacked the DNC. The Obama team was responsible for the spying and the unmasking and the work with the uh, British intelligence services and other foreign services to spy on Trump. And they're realizing that pretty darn soon they're going to have to come clean. And as I've said to you in multiple episodes in the past, they are going to have to take a bath at some point soon. Yeah. All right. I got a couple other things to get to here. Uh, one, which was mind blowing this week and that has not made, uh, you know, the mainstream media coverage the way it should because it's a mind blowing, uh, statement by Facebook. And if you missed it, <laughs> you need to hear about it. All right. Get to that in a second. All right, filter by, uh, folks, Dallas, 11 degrees, New York, super cold. I went up there for a Christmas party. It was freezing. Minneapolis is minus five for the Super Bowl. Winners in full swing. Your HVAC system is working. OT, overtime, baby. If you aren't properly maintaining your filters, you're not only breathing unhealthy air, you might find yourself with no heat and thousands in repairs. Thumbs down for that. Yeah. Now there's a better way with filterby.com. America's leading provider of HVAC filters for homes and small businesses. You got a factory with a thousand filters. These are your guys. You got a house with four or five filters. These are your guys, too. They make their products right here in America. Filterby.com carries over 600 different filter sizes, 
including custom options, all shipped free within 24 hours, manufactured, as I said, right here in the great old U.S. of A. Filter by offers a multitude of MERV options all the way up to hospital grade, so you'd be removing dangerous pollen, mold, dust, and other allergy-aggravating pollution while... 